You are listening to Behind the Numbers from Calamos Wealth Management, the podcast where our investment professionals get behind the statistics that drive the market. Calamos Wealth Management is a registered investment advisor. Statements made on the program are not investment advice. Opinions, estimates, forecasts, and statements of financial market trends that are based on current market conditions constitute Calamos Wealth Management's judgment and are subject to change without notice. Positions mentioned on the program may be held in client portfolios. I'm Fraser Rice, Senior Wealth Strategist, and joining us today is Michael Kassab, the Chief Investment Officer of Calamos Wealth Management. So, Michael, we've had a pretty interesting geopolitical week. What are you worried about from the macroeconomic numbers point of view this week? This week will be a very big uh, corporate earnings focus. Um, Last week, we had a number of financial firms reporting. Uh, Overall, they were pretty good numbers. Uh, But this this week, we get a broader set of companies uh, from the technology, industrial, consumer space. And so that'll give us a better feel for how the broader economy is holding up. And so how did that work as it related to quarter one? Uh, did it, uh, do you think we're going to have better numbers or are you looking for something a little more static? Well, if you, if you add them all together, all sectors together, this is actually uh, projected to be a decline in quarterly earnings versus a year ago, somewhere in the magnitude of 3 or 4%. Uh, that'll be actually be the first quarterly decline that we see since 2016. Uh, but of course, it, we've got to put it in the context of last year being a very strong year. I believe it was somewhere in the magnitude of 25% upside, uh, largely or in part driven by the, the corporate tax cuts. What are the current projections for GDP growth in the first quarter? Well, they've come up quite a bit. About a month or so ago, we were looking at barely positive growth in the first quarter. Uh, but as new numbers have come in, it now looks like we're going to have a more, more along the lines of a 2 to 2.5% Uh, GDP number in the first quarter. So since our last conversation, you mentioned a healthy consumer is key to keeping the economy going. Are there any numbers you were tracking on that front? Well, actually, last week, we got a very encouraging retail sales data for the month of March. Nice improvement from the January and February numbers that we saw earlier. Uh, Overall, the March retail sales were up about 1.6%. Even if you strip out auto sales, which the, which was the largest driver of that number, overall consumer spending is remains in good shape. The consumer has a pretty healthy balance sheet, as we discussed last time, and the employment situation is pretty strong, and wages are actually growing again. What about oil prices? Uh, it looks like crude is back above sixty five dollars a barrel, and there's some other geopolitical issues that are coming out. What are the implications of of this uh, set of statistics? Well, yeah, crude oil has rebounded along with equities, but even more so than equities. Uh, I think we were under $45 a barrel by late December, and now we're back above 65. So it's rebounded quite sharply over the past couple of months. Uh, Recent news came out that the Trump administration will not renew waivers that let countries buy oil from Iran without facing U.S. sanctions. That move is really intended to drive Iran's oil exports down to zero. Uh, which, could, which could potentially put further upside pressure on uh, oil prices. But the hope is that other producers, including the U.S. and OPEC nations, will be able to come in and make up for the, the difference in supply. Um, but, you know, I, I would say that rising oil prices is something that we're closely monitoring. Uh, but I wouldn't describe it yet as as a huge concern. I, with that said, the, the national average for a gallon of gasoline at the pump is once again approaching $3.00. Um, and that's right in time for, for summer driving season. So something to monitor, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a huge concern at this juncture. So with these different cross currents, where do the markets go from here? We're nearly back to all-time highs in September. Uh, essentially, the S&P 500 is hovering around 2,900. Uh, and probably not coincidental that it's somewhat stalled out the last week or so right around these levels. You know, it's the, the, the economic bound backdrop is, is sound enough. It's pretty good to, to keep prices elevated. But uh, the markets are more than likely they're due for a period of consolidation, which is just a, a fancy way of saying that uh, the markets are, are probably somewhat range bound. Um, and they'll, they'll sort of remain there until fundamentals play catch up with these asset prices. But, you know, the most likely path from here would be the markets to move sideways, perhaps drift modestly higher um, for the short term. But I, I, in my opinion, I think investors are going to want to see some sort of confirmation that global demand is improving, uh, which would lend confidence in this belief that earnings growth will will bounce back and get back on track in the second half of the year. Terrific. Uh, terrific insight. Thank you very much for your help here, Michael. And we'll talk soon. Thanks, Fraser. It was a pleasure. 
Thank you for listening to Behind the Numbers with Calamos Wealth Management. Look forward to future programming on calamos.com backslash WM.